him. And I just had kind of a bad experience here a few years back. And so I, I have to tell you this because you just have to hear this. So he goes over and he picks up the phone and he makes a phone call. And he says, is so-and-so there? And he says, well, he's in a meeting. Would you call him out for a minute? This is Eric. So he came out and this guy gets on the phone and he says, I am the chairman of the board of Solomon Brothers. Are you talking to Mr. Rittenberg? I said, I am. He says, are you talking about a deal? I said, I am. He said, he's worth $350 million, 80% of which is liquid. Is that enough money to do the deal? I said, yes, sir. He says, all right, here's my phone number. Call me back if you want to talk to me. I hung up. <laughs> Eric wasn't done. He came over, picked up the phone, dialed it, got another guy on the phone, and said, here, talk to him. So I said, hello, my name's Bill Bartlett. This time, it was the chairman of the board of Goldman Sachs. Had the same conversation. 30, 30 dry holes, remember. <laughs> so he hung up. <laughs> You're going to love this. So I turned, I turned to Eric and I said, well, my banker is Mike Brennan at Brookside State Bank in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he was impressed. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, he said to, I said to him, I want you to check me out. I gave him some names, and I said, I'll call you in the morning. And so I came home, and I was pretty excited. I have two people that want to do the deal. And so um, I called Mr. Rittenberg the next morning, and I couldn't get him. And I was talking to his secretary, and I said, Eric, ask me to call. I'm sure he wants to talk to me. Well, he went to Long Island for the weekend, and he said he didn't want to be disturbed. And I said, okay. Well, God talks to you in mysterious ways sometimes, doesn't he? So I picked up the phone, called Kelly Williams, and I said, let's go buy the company. The next day, Saturday morning, uh, Eric called me. He said, you didn't call me. And I said, oh, yeah, I called you. And I said, you, you weren't to be bothered. And I've already made the deal. And he said, you made the wrong deal. And I said, well, maybe so, but, you know, my word's my word. And so we started four months of due diligence on the company, and, and we made an offer higher than I thought I could stand almost, and we came in second high. And so I went home and got in bed, because uh, that was a devastating moment for me. And uh, Mrs. Bartlett came home and said, what are you doing? Get up out of that bed. We'll just do a startup company. She said, Mr. Williams will do a startup company with you. So. I called and got a meeting and went to Jackson and everybody said yes, but they had, had to have board approval, so it took 30 days. That's the longest 30 days of my life, but after 30 days, they came back and said, let's build a brand new company, and so that was the start of Caldas Technologies. Um, at this point in time, I want to introduce the love of my life, Rita Bartlett. Rita, would you stand, please? I'm going to tell you from the depths of my heart that Caldas Technologies was birthed with this lady on her knees shedding tears for me that God would give me my dream. That's the truth. Ours. She prayed for me, God, give me his dream. In Caldas Technologies, the last 19 years, I've had the passion for the company. But Jim, I think you'd agree with me. Rita has had the heart for the company. Thanks, honey. <laughs> when we started Caldas Technologies, I was absolutely determined that this company was going to be dedicated to the Lord. And so I called my pastor at that time in, H.A. Brumman. Pastor Brumman, would you stand, please? This is a great man of God here. <laughs> Pastor Brummett came to the company, and those of us that were founders, minus one, and my former partner and his wife, we joined hands and we dedicated Caldas Technologies to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the chairman of the board, he is the CEO, and he's the boss. And it's that way today. We were determined to run that company on Christian principles. As I was coming out of the, out of the wilderness walk um, and starting up this company, Bill Street had a vision. 
And in that vision, he saw me coming out of a furnace, shining like the sun. And he saw people coming towards me. And at that moment, we didn't know exactly what that meant, but I can tell you today what that meant. Since we started Caldas Technologies, in the early years, we didn't have to recruit anyone. People just came to our company. They came from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We didn't have to solicit anyone. They just called. They wanted to be a part of what we were doing. And that's what that vision was. And we started from zero. And in the first year, we got two orders from Exxon totaling $1.2 million. Um, this is, a, I'll bet you, the first time and the only time you'll ever hear this. I can assure you that Exxon Corporation does not give a million dollars worth of business to a brand new company with no reference list. I'll guarantee you it doesn't happen. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. We had good times and we had tough times. And we had some really tough times. In the very beginning, we, we had a lawsuit. And it was, it was a tough battle and very expensive. But God delivered us. And over the years, we had as many as three layoffs. God had got us through that too. It was a tough time. And some of you here tonight may be going through tough times. And surely Rita and I have been through tough times. But I'll tell you what, if you'll put your trust in God, he will see you through. And he's never late. He's never late. He's never late. And he won't let you down. And he didn't let us down. As we were going through this time, Brother Street said to me, Bill, I just feel in my spirit that you need to have a prayer meeting. And so I prayed about it, and we decided to start a Monday morning prayer meeting. With We had about half of the owners and a couple of other people. And uh, I would like for my prayer team to stand up. Come on, just real quickly, Doyle, Neil. Oh, Ann, God bless you. <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> I can't see anybody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're here tonight and you need something prayed about, if you don't grab a hold of Ann Bowman and have her pray for you, you're making a mistake. Just tell you straight up. Well, we prayed. We didn't just have a prayer meeting now. We didn't say, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That wasn't what our prayer meeting was. Our prayer meeting was, let us be light. Let us be salt. Let us show the world that you can do it God's way and be successful. And we pray for our families. We pray for the marriages. We pray for sick people. And this prayer meeting was not a social gathering. It was a real prayer meeting. We've been doing it for years. In 2000, our company was sold. And we've been through, we, the owners today are the fourth owners. And I tried to put together an MBO, and I was able to put through an MBO, management buyout, but we needed the company that we were buying ourselves from to carry part of it. And at the same time, they had another offer from another company, it was all cash. I wonder which one they took. I just want to take a second to talk about God's timing. You know, it's not our timing. God's timing is perfect. It's like when I was over sales, at John St. Company, you don't go from 18 to 42 million in your backlog because you're that good. You're not that good. Nobody's that good. But with God, you can do it. Well, in 2004, we were up for sale again. <clears throat> Neil, would you stand real quick? Neil Stencil is our chief financial officer at the company. 